I don't mind doing it. Okay, okay or, or just come down when you're ready. And we can do it. We just have the call at 11. And you'll, okay. I'm, ex um, I'm excited because I get to see the meet the bees in the... <laughs> I don't know if you call it a special kind of hive, but it's super special. Um, yeah, there are. There's, so, so this is your conventional hive, which the this box hive. Um, so these are great because when I I can open this up, the there's going to be your guard bees are at the front, right, guarding the entrance. Uh huh. And then and then there's going to be a little bit of bee bread, a little bit of honey, and then the brood chamber is going to be here. This very the womb of the hive, right? Mm -hmm. Where the where the queen is laying her eggs and all the babies are being nursed by the nurse bees, fed and raised and kept warm and so on. And then back here is where they're gonna ra they're gonna start storing their honey, right? So I can come in from the back and I don't have to get I don't have to put the babies in danger, I don't have to put the queen in danger, and I can just hopefully take this up without getting stung, but So back here, oh, so gorgeous. Come look. So back here, I have all the young bees, the younger bees whose job is making wax and dehydrating honey. And if you take a little peek in there, you can see them hard at work. Building the comb, putting the nectar in the comb. And do you see the ones all on the sides there, how they're kind of doing this back and forth thing they're like they're licking the sides uh-huh that's a genetic trait called washboarding and you see it in mite resistant bees they they don't really know exactly what they're doing but it's something to do with like laying down the scent they're making a little new comb right there see just starting the next one this one and this one were made from eggs that were taken out came from a rescue that i did these are a colony that was under somebody's house under in like attached by combs to the bottom of the foundation and the floor beams. Um, so I had to crawl in there on my hands and knees in the dark and try to get them out. Um, and so I, the first, the first group that I got out were these guys. And I had a little bit of comb that I, and a, and a bunch of bees. Let's just hope that they're gonna be real friendly but the bees say they like, oh, I love you. Hello, good my girls. Hi, sweetheart. Hello. Oh, you know me. So bees have the facial recognition. They say as good as a dog. Wow. They also dream collectively. The organism that is the beehive, they now believe dreams. The super organism dreams. And so, so, so she sees me, right? But because she's sharing, let's, let's come, come on my finger, you little cutie patootie. Here you go. Say hello. Say hello. Um, because this is propolis, this sticky stuff. The bees gather from, and I'm breaking up there. See, here I am. This is like performing surgery on a body. I've just opened up the skin. Right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So because the beehive maintains homeostasis, they breathe in and out, coordinated breathing. They maintain a constant temperature of 92 degrees, whether it's 105 outside or 30 below. Inside the hive, they're keeping it just like you maintain your body temperature at 92 degrees. What do you mean by they coordinated breathing? Um, well, they have to, they have to, they bring air in there are certain bees that are whose job at a certain point in their life is to ventilate is to to do the breathing for the hive so they're bringing in air mm -hmm. you know and then expulsing it expelling it well, how does it through the action of their wings oh how do they bring air in um through the little opening making openings um they they fan it with their wings they fan in oh, and okay. out. That's they say the, bree the beehive breathes about seven times a minute. See, see them buzzing their wings? Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Those guys are. They're temperature controlling. Mm -hmm. 
Oh. That was funny. It was just like a... <laughs> And we're, but we were always like, if somebody gets stung on the mouth, we'd be like, what were you, what were you saying? Or what were you thinking? You know? <laughs> okay. Um, okay, now we got to see the, take him over to her. The glory. I had the camera off. We oh. just had a, con during that part of the conversation. Would you and like us to repeat it? No, no, that's okay. But I'll just summarize for it. I'm standing in the middle of just a hundred flying bees. And they, that's when they bring up the conversation about... <laughs> How often they get stung a day at another place where the bees are. It's a commercial where the hand are pretty rough. Yeah, where, where bees are pissed off with the way they're being treated. But here I'm standing here and I'm just hearing, oh, it's super bad when they sting you in the lip. It's super bad when they sting you in the third eye. It really hurts when they sting you in the ass. <laughs> oh, under the fingernails is the worst. <laughs> I'm like, you go on, do go on. <laughs> and they're like, if you have a negative thought, the bee's gonna hard charge you. I'm like, oh, oh my god, so clean up my mind. Come the on. The thing is, is, the other thing is, and I have this happen all the time. The bees, they're gonna die if they sting you. There is no reason why they're gonna sting you for no reason. Right. Right. Unless right. you need it. Right. So like. Or unless they're at a commercial thing in their. Unless off. they think that their their lives are in danger and they need to give their life to protect the hive which is what happens, right? And, or they're like associating, you know, they're associating with you with as a predator because of their experience of being preyed upon Yeah. in a course. very rough that makes way. Sense. So, so um, what was I gonna say? Oh, so like if a bee wants to sting you, they don't mess around. They just bam, you know? But, but a lot of times the bees will do this, bing, mm -hmm. bing. And it's like, <laughs> it's like warning you. Kind of. Yeah, they're oh. warning you. They'll give you a warning first because, yeah. right? Yeah. Well, hey, that's you're not... in my territory yeah. or, or, and then a lot of people, I get this all the time on my Facebook groups where they'll be like, people will be complaining. There's this one bee and she's just following me around and she keeps harassing me and we can't go outside because she'll come up and she'll, Neh. and I'm like, look, if she wants to sting you, she would have been, see, she's trying to tell you something. Yeah. And when that started happening to me, after the beetles and the mites got here and stuff, and I, I started realizing, like, some, there would be, now none of them are having any problems at all anymore, because our bees have developed resistance through natural selection, through swarming people. <laughs> but, um, but it used to be when they were, when they would be getting weak or having beetles taking over the hive, I'd have a bee come out, I'd be working in the yard and one bee would come and and finally I'd be like, okay, what's going on? You know, and I'd start walking to a hive. If it wasn't the hive, she'd leave me. And then if I, you know, she just, and then she'd basically lead me to whatever hive it was. I'd open the hive. Sure enough, there's combs infested with beetle larvae. They're mm -hmm. starting to take over, mm -hmm. which are like lay maggot, maggoty type things in there. And then I would, so, so, you know, generally I, that's what I tell people, like, actually she's probably, they're probably trying to tell you like they need water or there's something going on in the hive. Maybe they're Queens, maybe they've had pesticide exposure. I don't know, but you know, just try just to like, if she wanted to sting you, she would have done it already. Yeah. It's super easy, you know? Yeah. Wow. So, so don't just assume that because a bee is going, eh, around you that's how she talks this is how the wild bees down in the lower areas build their hives in caves uh, they hang right. they hang their um, combs out in the open and actually this has been a great survival technique for them because when they're inside someplace and the hive beetles attack the comb or the comb gets old and it has disease spores or whatever in it. Um, if it's inside a cavity, that comb will collapse against another comb. It'll break and collapse against another comb. Or even if it just gets too much honey in it for it just to hold up and it gets real hot or something, it'll collapse against another comb and then the beetles will just take over and they'll eat the whole hive. It'll just get full of beetle maggots. But here, and I discovered this because I, I had <laughs> my one of my few survivors when I when we went through the die-off after the beetles and mites got here 
and I, I went from like 60 colonies down to like four, okay, over Ooh. many year period. And then those four had whatever traits they needed to survive. But I learned, I had one of these guys hanging like this from my kitchen ceiling and flying in and out the window. And then I would notice that when they would get a beetle infestation in one of their combs, they would molt it. The comb would drop oh. free and the beetles would go ahead and eat up the debris, but the bees would just make a new comb, a new fresh comb, Smart. and they'd keep going. So, so I, I would notice that, that that hive, when during the periods when the beetles were really bad and they were really struggling to survive and people were calling me and saying, I've lost a hundred hives this week, you know, that this comb, they would, they would molt like eight combs, you know, and then they would build all new combs, but the, the bees would just fly off as the, as the comb went down. If the queen, if they lost the queen, they'd raise a new one from eggs. And so this is, this is another substance. They don't like the wax and the honey is like stuff that they create from, from what they gather. The wax is actually, you know, created from their bodies after they eat honey. But this is called propolis. It's, um, they, they, cover in nature and in a and in their ideal environment they will it's called propolize they, they will cover lacquer the whole inside every the whole interior structure of the hive with this antimicrobial mix of saps and resins that they've gathered from plants that they from pine pine resin rosemary resin whatever and they bring it together and they mix it together and they make this and they cover the whole inside of the hive with it. And that creates the most hygienic mm. structure in nature mm -hmm. because the whole thing. And also they will put this, I'm not sure. I don't want us to get stung. Bees really don't like it when it's raining and you're playing with them, but I think you guys are going to be good. You're on camera. Okay. That's a hive beetle. This is, these are the guys that wiped out like 90% of the beehives on the island before they learned to coexist. Wow. Let me see here the comb. Don't get squished. Nobody, everybody get out the way. Okay, love you. Let's see what we can find here. This is a, so the, um, can we lift you out? I don't want to hurt anybody. Honey there. Mm -hmm. So in, we'll look at this a little bit more. They've attached this one to the bottom. Oh my goodness, you guys are growing. Wow. Mm, that's beautiful. Wow, it's just gorgeous. So what we have here, this is honeycomb, but if you look carefully, maybe we could blow it up the phone at some point afterwards. You will see larva. So the queen's gonna come here. She might I even see the be. larva. Yeah, the yeah. So at the very bottom, there's gonna be eggs, and then there's gonna be a little bit older larva, a little bit older larva, and these larvae are capped, which means they are going through metamorphosis. And this is a boy larva. Only one here, which is the Lone Ranger. And that's for a drone, and he comes from an unfertilized egg, and the queen can decide whether she's going to fertilize the egg or not when she lays it. And the unfertilized eggs turn into boys' drones whose job is to mate. With it. And, so, and when you see it look kind of black in there, what's that? Um, well, every... So this is new comb. Mm -hmm. this, is, this is probably the first generation of bees that's being raised in here. And every time... A, a larva is raised or it's filled with honey or filled with uh, bee bread and then emptied or hatches out every time they put another layer of propolis in there they sterilize the whole inside of the cell so that the next baby that's born in there and raised in there has a perfectly sterile incubation wow. place yeah so i'm gonna wow, put that is we've got in Intelligent. And they are living in what kind of tree? This is a hollowed out coconut. 
used to be growing next to that neem tree there. <laughs>